I'm going to evaluate this 190SL cylinder head. Prior to the uh, video, I went through and did the uh, time uh, consuming process of using a micrometer to measure the actual thickness of the cylinder head. And this is the most critical thing we got to deal with. Right here, I've got written down the original thickness is 3 inches 346. The minimum uh, is thickness is 3 inches 306. So you got 40 thousandths of uh, material that can be removed from the cylinder head. And as you can see, I've already written down the measurements right here. And let's start uh, over here in the left, the 3 inches 317, 320, 321, 323, 321. So basically, it's the same thickness over here. Up at the top, 3 inches, 344, uh, 334, 336, 338. Anyway, what this is is now a uh, hemi wedge. Uh, they, they cut this thing uh, crooked. So this thing is thin on this side, thick on this side. It won't materially affect the performance, but it's just something to be aware of. Now then, we've got the minimum thickness, 3306. This is thin over here at 3317. So if you subtract the 6 from the 17, that leaves 11 thousandths. Minimum, 11 thousandths of material before you hit the minimums. 11 thousandths represents the thickness of five human hairs. Each human hair is about two thousandths thick. So that means you're uh, awfully close to the minimums and what that means is uh, when it gets thin, this intake valve is gonna be very close uh, to the top of the piston. And in fact, it may even uh, smack the top of the piston. So you got to have to make sure that you sink the intake valves below the surface, uh, 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 about 60 thousandths below the parting surface. But what that means then is the valve stem is sticking up further and your valve adjustment will become um, problematic and also your uh, cam to uh, cylinder head distance is now uh, much shorter. So what you're going to want to do is to put shims underneath the cam towers to get the uh, cam timing back where it's supposed to be, which rep, which as the thin head gets thinner, the distance between the camshaft and the crankshaft closes up. So you want to maintain that same uh, center to center distance of the crank to the cam. And by that, uh, and, and you use shims underneath the cam towers. Uh, the uh, I've noted here that this is flat. And what you need to do to check that is use a straight edge. This is an actual Let's see, where is it? This is an actual Starrett. This is a precision machine tool right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says the, the um, L Starrett company. This is an actual precision piece of equipment, the straight edge. And what you do is you lay it on there and you use your feeler gauges and you try to get, see what, how much clearance you have between the feeler gauge and, I mean, between the, um, straight edge on the cylinder head and this is a three thousandths and it won't go in there so the the head is flat which is uh, uh, at least they milled the head flat now then um, so before we well if, if the head is not flat typically they when you remove them they will bow in the middle so that the so just you know just essentially it bows and what you have to be careful of is you need to straighten the head before you mill it because if you mill it here and here to the point where meet, you get to this surface, you end up with a um, uh, misshapen head. It's no longer flat on this surface right here. And before we move on, let's uh, these water distribution tubes. Uh, you can see the all the corrosion that has taken place. That's due to uh, head gasket uh, loosening up, um, uh, lack of maintenance with the coolant, etc. These uh, cooling tubes have to be removed and then uh, you will weld around here and then and remachine it or, and then install new cooling tubes. Uh, these tubes are not the same material as the uh, cylinder head, so you cannot just weld while these tubes are in place. Uh, the, the, uh, they start to uh, they, they do strange things. They start to sp uh, sputter and, and um, spark, and, and um, they are a form of a, um, an alloy, but they're not aluminum. So all these tubes have got to be re removed, all the, welded up here, and then uh, 
machined out and then tubes reinstalled and uh, of course now when you do some welding like that there's a very good possibility the, hort, the cylinder head will warp. Now let's, uh, let's see, let's check over here. The combustion chambers don't look too bad at all. This one's got a little pitting in it. I would probably weld inside here uh, because see how thin it is between here and here. You've got hardly any uh, material for the gasket to, to seat on. So I would weld up inside here. Um, this is, I would weld around here and make this hole a little bit smaller so you have more cross section for the gasket to grab onto. You can see right here, there's hardly anything for the gasket to grab on, uh, for the gasket to secure to. So that's a, this is a known problem area for leakage. All right, let's flip it over. And you can tell it's a 190SL because you got the square intake ports. Holes there somewhere. Didn't move. All right. And uh, again, check flatness on the top surface. Which, and this one was flat. This is pretty unusual because ordinarily they warp and people don't straighten them out. But this is a, a straight cylinder head uh, or flat on both sides, which is very impressive. Uh, here's your production date. It looks like 1959. Doesn't mean much. Um, people often want to know what the numbers are right here. There's a, there's a, looks like a, a three. Here's a two, there's a two. And this hat represents uh, the um, various oversizes of valves that the factory installed. You don't have to worry about that when you're installing new valves. I'm sorry, guides. This represents the oversizes that the, the um, factory used to install, uh, when selecting guides to go on the cylinder head. And the other issue on this particular head is people that do not know how to remove the timing chain pins, timing chain rail pins uh, that, that go in these holes here. Uh, they're threaded, so you screw a uh, screw into them and you pop them out. Well, somebody didn't know how to do that, and so what they did was drilled out and knocked them out from the backside, so these holes have to be repaired. Got good threads in here. Uh, the threads for the spark plugs all look good. So overall, this is a good salvageable head. And now you know what to, to do, what to look for when you're selecting a, or evaluating a cylinder head.